Check, check, one, two.
welcome to Wildcat, Cash and Wildcat TV. I'm Damon Abavi. It is senior night here in Cash in Oklahoma at the soon to be nicknamed gym. It's uh, coming down between the uh, show place and the, or actually the, yes, the show place and the den. So if you're on uh, Twitter, go back, make sure you go find uh, at TV Cash in or Cash and Wildcat TV and go vote. Go look for uh, previous posts. Uh, again, I'm Damon Abavi. Thanks so much for joining us here. I'm going to go ahead and switch over so you can see my lovely face. And it is uh, Monday night, senior night here as the Cash and Wildcats will be taking on the Dale Pirates, the Lady Pirates and the Pirates here in a doubleheader. Uh, but of course, we've got senior night festivities so where we'll be honoring and recognizing seven fantastic uh, individuals on the court and, uh, and our cheerleaders uh, from the senior perspective uh, tonight. Uh, uh, from a, if you're hungry, let me make sure and pan down. Look at this wonderful set. We've got, some, we got the uh, band uh, Booster Club fundraiser where they've got a spaghetti dinner so if you're listening if you've time chimed in to look at uh warm-ups and everything else like that uh certainly uh come on down get you a, a great spaghetti dinner for about 10 bucks and uh, it's got desserts everything salad some fantastic breadsticks uh, and you will uh, certainly continue to help mr g and the, and the music program continue to grow and do all the great things that they want to do here so uh again we've got about uh about 20 minutes to the start of the ceremony. Uh, I'm going to click it back over to the uh, to this court, watch the girls warm up. I'm going to finish my spaghetti dinner, and then uh, I will be going down to the court, and hopefully we'll have somebody here manning the camera so we can catch a lot of the senior, uh, senior night activities where we'll be honoring, uh, again, seven basketball players and three cheerleaders uh, on their last night in regular season on the court. Uh, so thanks so much for joining us here on Cash and Wildcat TV. I'm Neiman Abavi here powered by Squirtle.com, Squirtle.tv. Uh, hang tight, and we'll be back with you here in a sec.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2020 Cash and Basketball Senior Night. On behalf of the Cash Administration and coaching staff, we'd like to thank the Cash alumni, friends, and family for joining us during the time of celebrating the success of Cash and Basketball Seniors. Now, please direct your attention to center court as we present our 2020 seniors. First, senior cheerleader Riley Chamberlain. Riley Chamberlain is the daughter of Stephen and Joey Chamberlain. Riley participates in cheer, National Honor Society, National Technical Honor Society, and is NTHS officer. After high school, Riley plans to get her cosmetology license, attend college, cheer, and major in business management. Riley's message to her parents, Mom, thank you for being my biggest cheerleader and my best friend. Dad, thank you for being the best teacher and the best person I know to grow up to be. Reagan, we've laughed together more than any two people I know, but we've also fought, and I just want you to know that I was right every time. Thank you, Ryan, for showing me that I'm not the weirdest person in the family. Life would be so boring without all of you, and I love you more than anything in the world. Miss Riley Chamberlain. <laughs> Basketball senior, Caden LaFortune. Caden is a son. Caden is the son of Dan and Lori LaFortune. His activities include basketball, NHS, FCA, STUCO, and academic team. He plans to attend Oklahoma State University and pursue a degree in the medical field. Caden's message to his family, Mom, Dad, thank you for being supportive and always being there for me when I needed it the most. Mom, you have taught me to, that, to work as hard as I can, no matter the situation. Dad, you have supported my every decision and helped me achieve my goals. Whether it was in sports, academics, or life in general, you were there. I am thankful for my grandparents who have impacted my life in every way possible. I wouldn't be, the, be where I am today without your constant help. Thank you for making me the man I am. Lastly, I am thankful for my friends and the community of Cashel. I've lived here all my life, and I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Mr. Caden LaForge. Senior cheerleader, Macy Bickle. <laughs> Macy is the daughter of Chad and Lisa Bickle. Her activities include cheer for four years, student council, Skills USA Vice President, National Honor Society, and National Technical Honor Society. Macy plans to work in the cosmetology field while attending college to be a dental hygienist. Macy's message to her family, I would like to thank you for everything you have done for me over the years. You guys are my biggest supporters, and I wouldn't be where I am today without y'all. I am so lucky to have, to say that I have the best support system in the world. I love you all. This makes you big. Basketball senior, Alex Navabi. Alex is the son of Liz and Ian Navani. Alex's activity include FCA, NHS, STUCO, academic team, football, basketball, and baseball. Alex plans to attend ODU to play football and get some degree. Alex's message to his family, mom and dad, thank you for always being my, by my side no matter what, through all the ups and downs and every season. The thousands of hours spent on making me a better athlete and a better person. All the games, camps, practices, scrimmage, scrimmages, and workouts would have never been possible without you. Thank you for sacrificing so much to give me the opportunity to be where I am now. Thank you for always loving me and supporting me in all I do. I love you. And to the little bros and sis, 
I know I was very difficult, but thank you for always putting up with me and for being at every single one of my games. Mr. Alex Mabani. <laughs> Senior cheerleader, Chasey Nance. Chasey is the daughter of Chasey Nance. Her activities include cheer, student council, student body treasurer, and yearbook. After high school, Chasey plans to further her education and become a dental assistant. Chasey's message to her family, huge thank you to my family for always supporting me. I always, I'd always like to thank my dad for always being there and for me no matter what. You are my best friend and I love you. Miss Chasey Nance. Basketball senior, Caitlin Niemeyer. <laughs> Caitlin is the daughter of Chad and Kelly Niemeyer. Her activities include basketball, softball, yearbook, and peer mentor, and is on the Mercy Student Career Council. Caitlin plans to row at UCO and major in biology, attend PA school, get married, start a family, and adopt a bunch of animals. Caitlin's message to her parents and family. Thank you for shaping me into the young woman I am today and pushing me to be my best in my academics, athletics, and life in general, and for supporting me no matter what. Nana and Papa, thank you for always being there for me and loving me unconditionally, and thank you for taking me to get my nails done since I could walk and taking me on secret shopping sprees. Colton and Kelsey, Thank you for showing me how to love someone no matter how annoying they are or how much they push my buttons. I love you all and wouldn't be who I am today without you. Miss Caitlin Neymar. <laughs> Basketball senior, TJ Roberts. <laughs> TJ is the son of Mike Roberts and Jennifer Roberts. He participates in football, basketball, baseball, and golf. TJ plans to attend college, play golf, and major in business. TJ's message to his mom and sister, I appreciate, appreciate everything you guys have done for me, from coming to my games, for every sport, and supporting me in everything I do. I love you guys from the bottom of my heart, and can't thank you guys enough. Love, TJ. Mr. TJ Roberts. Senior Stewart. <laughs> Senior is the daughter of Brendan and Monica Stewart and Chris and Crystal and Wilkerson. Her activities include bait basketball, FCA, NHS, and student council. Senior plans to attend Oklahoma City University to play basketball and is undecided about her major. Senior's message to her family, mom, dad, Monica, and Chris, thank you all for so much for putting in countless time and money to help me achieve my goals. Thank you for spending hours with me in the gym and for traveling the country to do what I love. And aside from basketball, thank you for raising me under the Lord's name, for teaching me what it's like to know and to love the Lord. And to my siblings, thank you for pushing me to be better and going to my games even if you didn't want to. For all of my grandparents, aunts, uncles, and cousins, Thank you for all your support, and thank you for traveling to watch me play all these years. Lastly, I want to thank the Cashin community, especially the girls' basketball team, for welcoming me with open arms and making me feel at home. I'm so thankful for everyone's love and support. Go Wildcats! Basketball senior, Jacob Woody. Jacob is the son of Lee and Stephanie Woody. Jacob participates in basketball and baseball. Jacob's accomplishments include three-time basketball district champs and two-time baseball district champs. Jacob plans to attend college and play basketball or baseball and major in business. Jacob's message to his family, Mom and Dad, thank you for always pushing me to be my best. 
It has made me a better student and athlete. Thank you for the long hours spent at the gym watching me play. Dad, you are my second coach. Thank you for the countless hours of training me to be the be best athlete I can be. Dad, thank you for never giving up on me. Mom, thank you for always being patient with me and being proud of me no matter the outcome. Bella, Lainey, and Dre, you all are the best siblings. You all push me the most. All of the competitive games we played, you guys are my first team. Grandma and Grandpa, thank you for all the constant support and coming to my games means a lot. Thank you for all the friends and the town of Cashin. Mr. Jacob Wood. Basketball senior, Katie Taylor. Katie is the daughter of LT and Andrea Taylor. She participates in FCA, basketball, cross country, track, student council, and NHS. Katie plans to attend college and play basketball while pursuing a degree in sports medicine. Katie's message to her family, Mom, I am at a loss for words. I could write so many things, but I will keep it short. Having you as my coach has pushed me to be my best. I'm not ready to move on and have not, and, and not have you constantly vent to about film, practice, and silly girl things. No one will ever understand the bond we have. I love you with my whole heart. Thank you for being my best friend. Dad, I have no idea what I would do without you. Thank you for dealing with a two-girl household for so long and being our rock. Thank you for showing me what real hard work looks like and loving me unconditionally no matter what. Easton, having you come into my life was a big change, but I am so thankful for it. I can't wait to watch you grow up. Grandma and Grandpa, you, you two have been the best friends since the day I was born. I truly do not know where I would be today without you guys in my life. Mimi and Papa, thank you, for, thank you guys for constantly supporting me and showing me so much love. Thank you for reminding me how great I am no matter the outcome of the game. To my family, I appreciate everything you all do for me more than you all know. I love you guys so very much. Miss Katie Taylor. Finally, thank you to all of our seniors for dedicating so much time and energy to making this basketball program so successful. We are proud that you are and always will be Cash and Wildcats. And now pictures. Ladies and gentlemen, you have really been waiting on spaghetti and craving it. There are fresh noodles and it's ready to go. It's $10 per plate for adults and $1,200 per plate. It's a fundraiser for a band, so go get some spaghetti. Homemade meatballs. Thank you for watching the Cashman's
All right, welcome to Cash and Wildcat Television on Senior Night here on a Monday night. I'm Neiman Abavi, joining me up here in the deep corner of the yet-to-be-named gym. It might be the show place, it might be the, the den, the lair, I don't know. Is my, is my compadre, my achievement day champion, my hero, the best color guy in the state, Chris Gibson. Welcome, Chris. Thank you. Hey, look good out there. I tried. I tried. I, I, I actually showered and shaved today. It was good. It was good. But uh, no, no tears. The smiles, smiles. It's happy. It's a happy time. That's right. It's just a milestone. That's what I tell people. It's a milestone. But first of many uh, senior nights, you know, Lord, Lord willing, and we can you know, we certainly are thankful for all of our blessings. But certainly a, a fun opportunity, a milestone, right, as we as we move through. So, Chris, we've got Monday night edition of Cash Wildcat basketball as we close out the regular season. You see the girls coming out on the court. We talked about the crossing game. You weren't there, you missed it. It was crazy. We knew it was gonna be crazy. And I, I hope people believe me. And if you didn't, I want you now to be a believer because tonight is gonna be as crazy as that night, Friday night. And it looks like we've got three officials. We got three officials that look like they can run and do some business. So I think we're gonna have a good night. So you can, you can have three officials. You, you can, you just gotta write the checkbook. You gotta open it up. Hey, it was Valentine's Day, Chris. It was Valentine's Day. All the good ones were out doing their thing. But uh, we are so grateful to have officials here to have a game going. Chris is going to work on his uh, on his mic, and uh, we'll see if we can't get some things going for sure. But as we work through that, I want you to hang tight with me. We've got about nine minutes to the start of our uh, first of the doubleheader here between the Cash and Lady Wildcats, ranked 14th in the state 2A versus the number five, Dale Lady Pirates, coming in at 15 and eight. Uh, Eric Smith, Coach Smith, does a great job with his women uh, girls program and has for several years. They have uh, definitely have, have done great work over the course of uh, the last few years, getting the state, doing well, and putting together a really strong, strong program. Coach Smith uh, coming in on the night. Uh, their last win was uh, just a few days ago, last Saturday, uh, where they beat number three, Lada. Yeah, that's, a, that's that southeast side of the state. Big win for uh, the Dale Pirates and Lady Pirates. They've had key wins against Lada, of course, Luther, Ampo, CHA. Some of their big losses have come from Newcastle, Venos, uh, number one. Is it Venos or Venos? Venos, okay, I had it correctly. Ranked number one in uh, Class 2A, Class in School of Arts and Sciences in Alva. So uh, some of the some of their losses uh, coming in at 15 and 8. It's not these aren't typical eight losses. So uh, we're definitely uh, certainly ready to, to have a great game uh, uh, in terms of uh, tonight. So uh, I don't believe the teams have met before this year, have they? This is the first the meeting of the season. Is that right? The girls. The girls. This is First time. I know the boys met up in the uh, finals of the consolation, the three of the uh, Cashin County Line Tournament, where Cashin won, the Cashin boys won that game. And we'll talk about that game when we break down uh, the boys' game. But uh, certainly uh, it's going to be a, a really, really, really good matchup. You're going to see a lot of great athletes out there, uh, a lot of folks uh, shooting, driving. Uh, it'll be a good one. And the matchups you'll, you know, you'll want to see are, are uh, what we've spotlighted in the past. And that's uh, Brooke Shelley in the block and then the bevy of guards up top in terms of defense and shooting the threes. Chris, uh, you know, uh, I don't know if we've had a lot of time to catch up with Coach Taylor. Any thoughts regarding tonight's game as we, as we uh, get close here to Tim? I mean, I think, does that sound really bad in your ear? It's okay, I'll take it. Well, the, the thing I just noticed is, uh, you know, like you said, the lot of win against uh, the Dell. They'll just beat a really good lot of team. And if we come in here and, and play another great game like we did the other night against Crossings, that's going to kind of boost us going into the playoffs. And that's the kind of things that this girls team needs because they've had kind of some ups and downs this year. And if they can have two really big wins going into the playoffs, it's going to give them that confidence to kind of carry on and, and um, have some success in the playoffs. So, Chris, part coach, part player, man, bringing the knowledge. Absolutely. Speaking of that last game, a huge win in overtime for uh, Cash and Lady Wildcats. Over the, over the Lady Knights of Crossings Christian School in overtime, 61-55. Certainly had to work to get back, and it was the ice, ice cold, ice in the veins, Lauren Lamb, who got fouled with 2.8 seconds left on the clock, shooting a three, was able to hit all three free throws as a sophomore. As a senior, you know, in those types of situations, that's, that's awesome. But as a sophomore, Lauren Lamb, I, I think she has no conscience sometimes, you know. I mean, her motor's unbelievable. I just think she just goes into it like – 
I don't know, some different world when she's playing basketball. And she was able to block it all out, hit those three free throws, send it to overtime where the Cash Lady Wildcats were able to uh, basically hold uh, the Lady Knights uh, scoreless and win, win by six. And that, you know, what was impressive about that, it's hard just to do that in a quiet gym with nobody watching. <laughs> That's right. That was a, an environment, like a playoff type environment. And just like you said, just ice cold, got up nothing but net. And I saw her brother tweeted, and it was just like, <laughs> eyes cold. You know, she, he's like, that's one thing I, I think she could do that her brother can't, you know. And I thought that was pretty cool. Yeah, though. Griffin, who played the quarterback for us here in Cashin for a couple of years, about about three or four years ago, who's now at OSU, I believe, uh, uh, certainly had a, a nice – that's a nice reminder. If you're not following us on Twitter, you're missing out. You absolutely are missing out on just – on always a good conversation. Always, there. always. It's great. It's great. Con it's obviously clean, family oriented, but you certainly will get all the great updates. You'll get all the polls. You'll be able to interact and see what's going on, and you won't ever miss a scenario. So, uh, you know, Griffin Lamb follows us on Twitter. Why don't you, right? So, yeah, if he's going to follow us, I mean, heck, heck yeah. You, you have to. Heck yeah. All oh, right. Shout out to the to the band fundraiser oh my god that spaghetti was awesome yes and and it's open till seven so if you are watching right now and you're hungry and you're thinking man what am i gonna eat for supper get up here and get you a plate it's delicious i'm telling you delicious i got i think uh, karen mccabe she was nice to me she gave me four meatballs on my plate it was, oh man it was delicious well i got two rolls you got, so. oh you got two rolls yep. yeah so all right i don't know i, I think you may have won that one <laughs> Uh, nonetheless, yeah, we've got a lot of great things happening here, obviously, in cash. And we had Achievement Day, Chris. Uh, that went off without a hitch. Oh, that, that was, was great. Yeah, and we appreciate this, the Squirtle and, the, like I was talking about, the administration just letting us get out there and put spotlights on kids that, you know, we've never done that before. And that's something that, uh, I mean, I guess this is all new this year, but that's just another way to spotlight our kids, and that's what it's all about anyway. Amen, amen. It was a fantastic. I wasn't able to be here in person. And uh, even though I wasn't here, I was at basketball. I did I did tune in. I caught a nice interview with Lane Broadbent. Heck and yeah. I saw a lot of the shows going on. It was fantastic. And and so certainly a lot going on. And, and then, uh, as you offered up, definitely a lot of uh, praise and gratitude to our administration here. Yes. For kind of, and I was on Facebook. I saw a ton of folks making comments. Yeah. And were loving the, loving the yep. fact that we were doing this. And there, if you, if you, want to, if you don't know what we're talking about, go on and look at the archives. And you can find the Achievement Day on there and watch any of it. And uh, it's a long five hours, but you can fast forward to what, you know, try to find the parts you want to watch and stuff like that. But it, it's a neat way to go back and look and, and, and have some memories that way, too. Absolutely. And I, I just got a text, ironically, from Lane Broadbent. Lane was saying, hey, if you, don't want, to, if you want someone to come up and talk a little uh, Achievement Day at halftime, I can be there. So we might have a little bit more on Achievement Day here at the halftime of the girls' show, or the girls' game. <coughs> if you did not join us earlier, uh, make sure you can go back and uh, take a look maybe at halftime, uh, rewind the uh, the start of this particular stream where we had uh, senior ceremony, senior night ceremonies going out as we honored uh, seven basketball players and three cheerleaders. And we, we need to do a better job of acknowledging our awesome cheerleaders here on senior night as well. Uh, in terms of uh, Riley Chamberlain, Chasey Nance, and Macy Pickle. We, we had Macy Pickle up here. She did a great job. She talked about people throwers. I don't know if you caught that one. Oh, that was all, yeah. Fantastic. She had like the quote of the year. Basically, quote of the year. That's exactly right. So go back. Make sure you take a look at that if you'd like. If you want to cry, smile, laugh, some of the speeches or some of the commentary from the, from the players about their parents and siblings was fantastic. It certainly shares the love that we have here in the Cashin community. So with about two minutes left, we're going to go ahead and uh, we'll, we'll uh, probably get uh, close to uh, the national anthem starting lineups. So hang tight with us here. I'm Neiman Abavi, my partner Chris Gibson next to me here on Cash and Wildcat TV. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. Senior night here with the Cash and Wildcats will be taking on the Dale Pirates. Hang tight. We'll be back in a couple.
Right, uh, great job there by Mr. G and the band. God bless America. Very good. So uh, for the Dale Lady Pirates, number five in the state in 2A, we've got a scratch with junior Amelia Eidelman, who's not starting in her place, will be senior Jason McClure. Coach Smith and the Dale, Dale, uh, Dale Lady Pirates have only one senior starter there, and that is Jason McClure, who's uh, been coming off the bench, number four. And for the Cash and the uh, Lady Wildcats, we've got Kate Taylor, Kay, uh, Neely Bedick, Kayla Niemeyer, Cedar Stewart, and Brooke Shelley, what you would expect here on senior night here on a great Monday night. Battle of the top 20 here, top 15, where Cash and Lady Wildcats, number 14, will battling number five, Dale Pirates, coming off a big win off of Lotta, number three, just a couple of days ago. And like I said, just being able to play this type of competition, the last game going into the playoffs, I mean, it's just gonna give a boost to both teams moving forward, and, and just whoever wins is really gonna boost that confidence up. Tip one by Dale, number five, Elaine Witt with the ball. Cedar Stewart quickly down right side. She'll kick back out. Deep three by number 33. 23, Faith Wright is off. Rebound back to 21, Dane and Lang. And Dale will start back over. Drive kick. Looks like they're going to work that middle here and look for that outside three-point shooter. Senior, J J.C. McClure, a little off. Loose ball, and it's out of bounds. Cash and ball. We do have a three-man crew tonight. We did not get the names, but we'll give them high fives and tell them they're doing a great job. Kate Taylor with early, easy, uh, early pressure with Elaine Witt on her. We'll get her across the timeline. 7.29 here. Kick out to Bedick on the top of the left side. Look for that back cut to uh, Taylor. Screen to Cedar Stewart down low. You're going to watch those back cuts down below. 
Looking to get into Shelly there. Good work. Got the senior on the sophomore. That'll be the battle, number four against 41. Cashin, Lady Wildcats, staying patient. Off the leg of the Dale Lady Pirate. It'll be Cashin ball here, 7-0-8, no score. One thing I really want to see is some of that dribble penetration out of, you know, Kate and Taylor, uh, Neely Bedick, and uh, Cedar Stewart. Uh, it seems like when they get that going, it, it just opens up the floor. And getting it to Brooke Shelley right there. <laughs> just and like that. Getting it to her down low and turning and letting her just go to work, that's that's going to be a big key to the game too. 2-0. Brooke Shelley, the sophomore, picking up from her 18 points in the last game against Crossings. She's been on fire the last few games. Been the leading scorer, I believe, in the last three Dale with the left-hand drive and dribble. Nice job there by Elaine Witt. Junior right past to Kate and Taylor. Bet it quickly with the left hand. All the way down. She'll stop. Nice work there to pull back out. Ooh, almost loses it. She's got the trap. Looks like she will step out of bounds. That's a tough spot. She lost the ball when she was going retreating and got stuck in that trap. Yeah, when they get you in that trap right there, it may be, a lot of times just the best thing to do is maybe call the timeout or maybe try to even throw the ball off the, the opposing player's leg or something trying to get it to go out of bounds. But... Just a tough break there when she lost the handle. Mackenzie Gill with the long three miss. Cedar Stewart with the rebound all the way up by herself and in for the senior on senior night. 4 2 Cashin. Yeah. Elaine, oh, sorry. Go uh, ahead. I was just going to say, Brooke did a good job of kind of boxing out out there and, and got the ball to Cedar just on the run and got the good good run and lay up there and then didn't really get back on defense very good there for the Cats that time. Well, Elaine Witt, the junior, has been aggressive for Dale. She's yes, been getting she after it. Trapped there at half court, gets the steal. Elaine Witt with it, she'll kick it back to 21. <coughs> That's Dayton Lang. She's gonna look for the screen from JC McClure. Kick back out to the right baseline, number 23, Faith Wright will look for it. Back to uh, McClure, the Lyot. Good defense there by senior Niemeyer, Kayla Niemeyer. Brooke Shelley out on McClure, she shoots a three and it's good. And just like that, it's 7-4, three point lead for Dale. Little uh, press there, broken up easily with Taylor and Stewart. Trouble down the ball early for the Cash and Lady Wildcats. There's the trap, trying to look for a cross court pass to Stewart. She loses it. Faith Wright with the ball. Deep pass to 13, Mackenzie Gill. She'll shoot the three this time. It's good. Goodness. 10 4, Dale up on Cash and timeout. It's like Coach Taylor said, that's enough. we got to figure this out. Yeah, and, you know, that was a good pass by Taylor to kind of find uh, Cedar on that backside elbow. They're kind of cheating over and, and putting a lot of pressure on the ball side of things. That's going to be something that they're going to have to do. And they come over and start doubling, you know, or trying to trap. Those girls that are getting trapped are going to have to look up and find the open girl. Kate did a good job, and just Cedar mishandled it just a little bit, enough to work to go out of bounds. And, uh, but that's something that they're going to have to look for. And if they can find her on that back side and, and uh, maybe, you know, when she gets it open on that elbow, either take that jumper or find somebody down, yeah. you know, somewhere else that's going to be open. But uh, when they're pressuring that much and, and, and extending themselves out to the ball on the ball side, there's going to be some openings. Just have to find them. So definitely, find, you know, definitely don't get trapped. All right, look where that double team's coming yep. from. A little full port man pressure from Dale. Cedar Stewart with the ball, a little overrun there by the defense. She breaks it. She goes down the middle of the lane, kicks it to Niemeyer. Niemeyer will look. She'll drop in. She'll fight for the ball underneath. Loose ball. Cedar Stewart with it. It goes oh. in. <laughs> hey, look what I found. 6-10. Dale up by four now. Good work there by the Cash and Trio there in the lane. Niemeyer, Shelley, and uh, Cedar Stewart keeping it open. Three is missed. Vedic fight for the ball. What are we going to have? So Vedic will be called. For fighting for the ball, looks like she'll be called on the reach. I would have probably let that one go if they're not going to call over the back. First foul for Cash and first in the game, first on Bedick. It looks like she'll take a seat. Lauren Lamb will be coming in for her, the uh, red hot sophomore guard. Dale works it inside. Dana Lang with her first bucket of the game. 12 6. Full court man press. Taylor with the ball. Elaine Witt, pressure with her. Gets it across Niemeyer. Too many girls up top, but Niemeyer will shoot the three. Shelly with the That's rebound. She'll go up. No call. It's kind of letting them play down there, aren't they? Yeah. On one end and not the other. So Dale's got it back. Nice work by Dale. McClure with the ball. She'll work to the left side. 
Dayton Lang, she'll eye it. She'll get switched out on Stewart. She'll get, skip pass to the right wing. It's up. Hard off the iron. Dale's able to get the offensive rebound. Lang will look back into McClure. The senior will work against Shelley. She'll go up. This is the bunny. Good defense there by Brooke Shelley. Loose ball. Witt will kick it out. Deep three. Goodness gracious. Cash and get, get any love on the bounce. Neymar was there, she was blocking out, and somehow just. All three of those offensive rebounds by Dell. We had position, the ball just bounced exactly where that needed to be for the other girl to get it. And uh, just ba bad bounces all around right there. If the girls keep up and keep boxing out like they're doing right there, they're, they're gonna be okay, they're gonna get those rebounds. Well, it's certainly been a physical game thus far. Two fouls for Cash and zero for Dale. The lane will kick out to 21. Dana Lang, she's got it. McClure will shoot the three. She's off. She's, that's about her third shot on the night. Pressure comes in from Dale. No block call, oh, and then when we finally get it, she uh, basically, Dana Lang rode her basically 15 feet across the baseline. Dale fans were trying to figure out what the call was. It was a good one. First foul for Dana. Dale back out in a full court press again. Kate Taylor will work with again. Stewart needs to slide down. She sure does. They're able to get the ball across midcourt. Bedick is checked back in for, it uh, looks like, for Niemeyer. Bedick will eye the three. She'll look into Shelly. Good call there on the work. Nice five. Up and under. Brooke Shelly. Wonderful move on the senior. 8-12. Cashing down by four. 2.35 left here in the first quarter. And that that's the... Uh, look I want to see on Brooke's face. When she gets that ball, that time she got it, she turned, she made a move and went strong to the hoop and it fell for her. When she does that, she is good. Sometimes when she's going against a, a taller girl, sometimes sometimes she doesn't look to, to be aggressive like that. That time she did and that's what we're going to have got to have out of her tonight. Fast paced game. Stewart with the jumper. She'll get her own rebound. Hey! Miss it. Shoot it again. It's in. She's got six. Leading score for the Cash and Lady Wildcats. 14-10. <clears throat> Elaine Wynn with the ball. She's been dynamite for Dale. Deep three there. In and out. Rebound by Stewart. No call on the reach. There it is. Nice work by Cedar Stewart on the rebound. That foul will be the first on Faith Wright, sophomore guard. We've got some subs coming in. Number three, it looks like, uh, for Dale. And number 35, Maya Miller. Number three is, uh, let's get it right here, Amelia Eidelman. Oh, my, my apologies. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Taylor, about 112 girls on her. And the entire Dale team on her across the, the court. Lots of hand checking. They're getting away with a lot, aren't they, Chris? D3. Bang! Kate Taylor, you stayed You stayed quiet for me. We both knew that was going in, didn't we? I seen the shot going up. I wasn't going to say anything. I knew that was going <laughs> through the net. That's the correct call. Nice work by Lamb to get the foul. The Dale, Dale fans wanted the jump ball as, as the Dale Pirate 23 jumped over the back of Lamb to touch the ball. That's not a jump ball, that's a foul. And that'll be the third team foul for Dale, the Lady Pirates, number two for uh, Faith Wright. It's 13-14, Cashin's whittled down that six point lead to one now. Take it. Stewart with a skip pass from Taylor. Just short, looked like that was going in. From my angle, it looked like it went through the hoop, but it just banked right off the front of that front of the rim. Amelia Eidelman on the baseline against Taylor. My, Maya with the move, nice, no walk call. She'll drive left hand, the, senior, uh, the, the junior throws one up, rebound Shelly. Taylor's got numbers, nice pass to Lamb, and there it is, Lord Lamb going to the line. What they say, death taxes and Lauren Lamb going to the free throw line. <laughs> Girl found her, a nice pass from Taylor right at the right moment. First foul on number 22, Brooke Rutland, who's just checked in. First one is up and good, her first points of the game. Tie ball game, 14 all. Yeah, and Taylor did a good job that time. She saw Lauren out in front, but it, if, it would have been a really tough pass. She waited to that last second, got her a good open shot, and she got fouled on the way up. Yeah, so good job by Taylor there to, to wait and make the best pass. Absolutely. Lamb, the second shot, it's up, and it's good. First lead for Cashin. Oh, 15-14. 49 seconds left here in the first quarter. It's been a crazy first quarter. Lane Witt 
aggressive with the ball. 22, Brooke Rutland with the ball. She'll back back out. Kate and Taylor on her. 40 seconds. Look for that back cut. Good look by Dale. Nice ball movement by the Dale Pirates. Elaine went with the three. She's rewarded with that. Her ninth point of the game. Dale back up by two. Bedick will kick back out. Ella Sut or, uh, uh, that's right, uh, Ella Sutkins checked in for Cedar Stewart. Sorry, I missed that. 15 seconds. Bedick to Taylor. Taylor's going to look to shoot that if she can't get it into Shelly. Nice work by 35, Maya Miller to back Shelly all the way out to almost the three-point line. D3 by Bedick, it's up. Ella Sutkin fight for the rebound. <laughs> Ella did a good job getting that rebound and trying to get a shot up and maybe get fouled or something and just didn't didn't get the call, didn't get, get didn't get the basketball, but a great hustle there by Ella. So with that, it's the end of the first quarter. It was long and fast at the same time, if that's possible. It's your Dale Lady Pirates up two over your Cash and Lady Wildcats here on Cash and Wildcat T TV, 17-15. Hey, Chris, can we go to a quick timeout, maybe work on the audio a little bit and see if we can come back? Yeah, definitely. Okay. Hang tight with us. How's that? A little better? Beautiful. Thank you, Chris. All right. Man, Chris, not only <laughs> color, the guy's a technical whiz. <laughs> I don't know about that. Heck yeah. I love it. Achievement day. Oh, my God. That's even better right there. Is that there. better? Oh my Can God, you hear me now? Yeah, I got you now. <laughs> All right. So here in Cashin at the Showplace slash Den, it is your Cashin. The Showplace Den. The Showplace Den. Man, we can do that. <laughs> it's your uh, Cashin Lady Wildcats down two. They have the ball. We've got uh, Stewart back in, Taylor, Bedick, Lamb, and Brooke Shelley. Kick out the Lamb. She's got the pressure. She quickly moves out of it. Nice work there by the sophomore, not allowing that double team to come over. Taylor with the three. It's up. Bang! Taylor with her second three-pointer of the night. Six points. Cashin leads 18-17. Yeah, that was a great job there on the offense that time of ball movement, finally uh, finding Kate and Taylor right out there on the open in the open, and she just drained it. Witt will kick out to 22, Brooke Rutland. Rutland out to 21, Dana Lang, who has, uh, looking for that screen back, that screen and roll with number 35, Maya Miller. Deep three, it's in. Nice work by Dana Lang, her fifth point of the game. Dale back up top by two, exchanging threes. Heavyweight battle. Taylor staying away from that trap. Gets blocked, she didn't have to throw it away. She had plenty of time, possession arrow changes. In and out, Dana Witt up and under. Elaine Witt, she's got 11. Pressure's kind of getting the cash in here. Bedick loses out of bounds. Yeah, and it's just uh, frustrating Taylor back there in the backcourt, and she just, I think she, a while ago, she just thought she had, was you know running out of time there and uh, made a bad pass, but uh, she does a great job of ball handling, and I think if she just, you know, keeps doing what she's doing and, and just kind of settles down a little bit, she'll be fine with getting that ball across. Rebound by Lamb. Nice work there by the sophomore. Taylor quickly up here in transition. Nobody back. Numbers are there. Bedick with the three. It's up. Bang! And the foul! Counted, sister! Yes, ma'am! We got a nice three-pointer there by junior guard Neely Bedick. She bangs it in. Count the bucket. She'll get the and one. Yeah, she was set up ready to shoot that. As soon as Taylor got it to her, put it up, and the girl just backed right into her and didn't let her come down. And uh, Great chance for a four-point play here. In and out. Rebound by Maya Miller. And that was nice to see Cash and it quickly in transition off that rebound, not waiting for that trap. Yeah, and that's one way to beat a trap right there is just get it and get it out and get it down the floor and, and beat them to you, uh, to the punch. And uh, that was a great job by Taylor. And, and that may be something she looked over at her mom and her mom said, get the ball up the court, you know, and because uh, that's what she did that time. She didn't wait around and, and just was very aggressive and it paid off. No walk call on Witt. Good take there by number three. Strong move by Amelia Eidelman to get her first bucket of the game. Bedick with the ball. She'll work left side. 
She'll go down left side. She'll keep working left. He's got it. She'll keep it. Floaters up. No call. Rebound kicks out. Lamb had her hand on it. By a Miller. Steal by Baddock. Taylor's got it back out to Lamb. Lamb will go up. In and good. Nice work there by the sophomore. Woo! Lauren Lamb with her fourth point of the game. 23-24. Cash is still down by one. Turnover. Ball goes out of bounds. David Lang looking for somebody. Kicks it back out. Looks like she was looking for 22. You know, Rutland. as she drives in, it may be something to watch and see if the officials continue to let her get away with it. But as she's driving in, she's throwing those elbows and pushing off. And uh, a little, if she keep, you know, if she gets a little more aggressive doing that, they're going to have to blow the whistle on, uh, as an offensive foul at some point. Uh, right now, they're letting her get away with it. And let's see if she, if she keeps, continues to do that, if she gets away with it or not. Peyton Taylor quickly up, gets it to Stewart. Shelly gets the kind of the, the uh, quick pass back out to uh, Stewart. Nice pass from Baddock into Shelly. Good work, good teamwork. Nice ball movement. And that's point number six for Brooke Shelly here. 25-24, cash it up by one. Still tipped by Taylor, I should say. Missed shot, Lamb with the rebound. Nice work by the cash and defense. Yeah, that last time down, that was a great pass by Cedar Stewart. Good job by Brooke to get it, you know, get in position to, for that pass to be available, and then for Cedar to find her and make, you know, deliver that to the right spot was a great, great play and great finish by Brooke. Let's see if we can do it again down here. Cash and stay patient on this possession. Up by one, 446 left here in the second quarter. Bedick on the wing, lefty, no call, and there is the call. Nice work. That'll be foul number six. And here's the situation, Chris, where I'll tell you, the more aggressive team here is actually has the more fouls on the, on the board. Yes. Six. Next foul on Dale will go to, uh, to go to cash in the one-to-one. -one. Yeah, and that's the thing. I think I really think, and that's what I was talking about, you know, as she was on the offensive side, she's being aggressive and being, you know, being the aggressor. And uh, teams do, will do that, and they'll test the officials and see what they can get away with, what they can't, and then, then adjust. Absolutely. Smart basketball, and Dale definitely yes. has that. Yeah, I mean, there's nothing wrong with what they're doing. or I mean, if, like you said, it's the smart thing to do is see what you can get away with. If you can get away with it, do it. Play, you know, play within the rules. But if they're going to let you do something, you know, get an advantage. Stewart with a great drive, just misses the layup. Dale quickly back down in the lane. 15 with the ball. Looks like number 13, McKenzie. McKenzie Gill with uh, the bucket. She's got five on the, on the night. 26-25, back and forth game. I think this is like the eighth lead change, at least here. 354 in the second quarter. Taylor back down. Cash and Lady Wildcat down by one. Man pressure for Dale. Looking for the screen and the roll. Brooke Shelley hiding that block. Let's see what we got here. Let's see if they'll work back. They'll look for it. Give it to her. She gets it on the high post. She'll work. Gets the triple team. She's able to get it out to Bedick. Bedick will drive lefties up. Floaters up and in. Toilet bowl. Nice work there. Good look by Brooke Shelley to find Bedick. Yeah, that time, you know, they triple teamed her down there. She did a great <laughs> job of finding Neely, and, and Neely took advantage of not having anybody on her and had that first step and just took it right to the hole and was aggressive, and that uh, paid off with the little toilet bowl sinker. So we got a walk here by Mackenzie Gill. 27-26, cashing up by one. Lauren Lane with the ball. She'll move it out. Kate Taylor, she'll work up top middle. Thank you, Whitney Larimore, for the uh, text. Appreciate it. If you guys can't hear me, make sure you text us. Stewart with uh, the jumper, a little hard, little long. Dale with the rebound, quickly down. 2.52 left here, 13 out, out to number 22. Rutland will shoot the three in and out. Taylor with the rebound. She's got Stewart down the court. Passes up, a little long. Lamb all the way in. No call of charge. Tough call there. No circle under the basket. I think Lamb was a little out of control there when she got that. I think maybe she was expecting that contact a little bit earlier. So with that, Lamb will take a seat with her first foul. Izzy Reeves. Actually, I'm sorry. Izzy Reeves will be coming in for Brooke Shelley. Give her a well-deserved spell. 27-26. Cashin still with the lead. We've got uh, J.C. McClure in for, uh, for the Dale Lady Pirates. She brings it back into Elaine Witt. Elaine Witt has probably had the ball about 60% of the time, either driving or shooting. McClure with the deep three. It's off the side iron. Nice rebound by Bedick. She says, thank you very much. Stewart on the outlet, left side. Quickly picked up by Witt. Great defender. 
Elaine Witt's been doing great. Nice speed there to, to Bedick, and it's in. Nice work. Cedar is dropping dimes tonight. That was an awesome pa pass by her, you know, that cut by Bedick. And, I mean, I didn't think there was any way to get that ball in there, and she just dropped it right in front of her and let her just go down and, and hit that layup. So Stewart with the rebound, looking for Laura Lamb Streaky, and I think uh, Lauren was running a, a corner route, and, and uh, <laughs> or actually she was running a post, and uh, Cedar was throwing the corner route. Yep. That's okay. Good work, good look. 29-26, Cashin's biggest lead of the night by three. Two minutes left here in the first half. Elaine Witt, junior guard, brings it back to the right side. She's got Dana Lang up top with her. High post, number 15, who's checked in. We'll get a name on her here in a sec. 13, Mackenzie Gill will work back to Witt. Deep, deep pass, great job by Lauren Lamb. Catch it, or uh, Kaylin Niemeyer, my apologies to the senior and her awesome family. Kaylin Niemeyer working very hard across the baseline to knock that out. Yeah, Kayla was a little bit behind her, but she sure made it up in hustle and got over there and knocked that ball out where she didn't get the, the open layup. Goodness. Dana Lang with the rebound. Gash and Wild Lady Wildcats kind of fall to the side, and she goes up for the easy left-hander. 29-28, Cash is still up by one. 128 left. Witt on Taylor, out to Stewart. Dana Lang on her. There's the trap that they've been, we've seen all day. No reach call. Cash will take, uh, will keep uh, possession. And I, if I'm Taylor, I'm pulling my hair out as the girls get stuck in that corner over there every single time. Well, they kind of changed it up that time. I saw the coach kind of uh, motion to them and say, you know, change it up where they didn't um, trap Taylor and let, them, let her dump it over to Cedar that time. They, they waited until Cedar got it, and then they trapped. So they're throwing a little bit different looks at them up, up and down, every time up and down the court. Long three by Bedick is, long, is uh, off the uh, back iron. Went quickly down. Bedick ironed that one. Nice work there by the Ninja. She saw it. She was coming to get it. Good defense there, the intended pass for Dana Lang. A little safety, a little Roy Williams for you. That was. Reading the quarterback's eyes there, I think. <laughs> Elaine Wed, can you tell we missed football? <laughs> Izzy Reeves on the baseline defense there. Good job by the Cash and Lady Wildcats in their, in their patented man defense. They haven't gone away from it. Cedar Stewart out on Witt now. And she'll look to curl back in, kick out to McClure for her 20th three-pointer of the game, and that one's good. You shoot enough of them, they're going to go. That's her sixth point of the game. She's made two three-pointers on the night for the senior. Taylor's got the ball. She passes up the shot or any drive. She'll bring it back out. 28 seconds. This is probably going to be it here for the half. She'll work right side. Izzy Reeves, Niemeyer on the high post. Swing pass back out to Stewart up top. Kate Taylor there. Oh, the, it was there. Tough pass by Stewart. Taylor was there on the short corner. Would have been a pretty easy bucket. Yeah, that, that time just over through just about an inch or two. And and uh, let it bounce out of, but she, you know, she's got that vision and it just didn't make, didn't make contact that time. Lane Witt drives left hand, nice drive by the guard, it's in. 13 points for Elaine Witt, no fall. They're gonna call it Cedar Strew in the deep heave at half court, and that's it at halftime. Little 4-0 run for Dale to extend the lead out. 5-0 run, I should say. 33-29 over your Cash and Lady Wildcats here on senior night. Good game. It's been good effort. A lot of good uh, action thus far. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is, I mean, the atmosphere in here is like a playoff game, and they're going to have to, you know, play against teams like this in the playoffs as they move on. And like I said before the game, you want to play in this atmosphere. You want to play against a team this good and just see what you're made of. I think they were down. Were they down at halftime against Crossings? And they came, made the, yes. made the comeback? I that's the case. So, you know, they're not going to panic. They've been in this situation before. They're going to go in the locker room, make a few adjustments, and then come out and, and, and execute. And I have a feeling that they're going to go in there and learn from the things that they, they saw. They changed up their press. They'll change up their press a time or two. I'm sure Coach Taylor and Coach Robert Robinson will go in there and kind of tell them, hey, this is what to expect. If yep. they go here, if they don't trap you here, they're going to trap you here. Those kind of things right there is what's going to make them better in the second half and be able to kind of power through and, and hopefully get that get that lead back and take it to the end. Absolutely. So uh, we'll break it down here. We'll take a quick break. Uh, we'll add up some numbers. We'll come back to you. We've got about eight minutes here in the half. Uh, we don't have any guest schedules for the halftime, so we'll just hang tight here. 
And uh, we'll be back here in a couple seconds. Uh, we'll keep the live video feed. But thanks so much. I'm Naaman Abavi with Chris, Chris Gibson here on Cash and Wildcat TV as your Cash and Lady Wildcats trail Dale Lady Pirates 29-33 here on Senior Night.
Welcome back to Cash and Wildcat TV. I'm Eamon and Bobby. Chris Gibson joining me up here in the corner. And we're at halftime of the Cash and Lady Wildcats game against the Dale Lady Pirates, where our uh, Lady Wildcats trail the Dale Pirates 29-33 here on senior night. So we kind of broke it down a little bit. We know there's uh, some opportunities for the Cash and Lady Wildcats. Let's break down a little bit of the scoring. I'll do the Lady Pirates real quick, and then uh, Chris, if you want to break down the Wildcats as yeah. we go into halftime. So for the 15-8, uh, and eight, number five, two-way Dale Lady Pirates, led by a junior guard, Elaine Witt, who's just been unreal, 13 points, 13 of their 33. Uh, she's there, following her is junior guard, Dana Lang, who has two, who two has two fouls, but she's got seven points. Jason McClure, senior guard, with six. Mackenzie Gill, sophomore guard, with five. And Amelia Heidelman, junior guard, with two. For the total for 33, uh, Dale Pirates hitting one, two, three, four, five three-pointers there in the first half. Yeah, and then for the Wildcats, uh, pretty been pretty even scoring across the board. Neely Bedick leads the way with seven. Uh, Kate Taylor has six. Cedar Stewart had six. Brooke Shelley has six, and then Lauren Lamb has four. So, and and that, that's why I was kind of looking at to kind of see what where was the difference at, right? The difference was behind the arc. They they made uh, one, two, three, four, five threes. We made three. So, I mean, that's a six-point difference right there. That's about the difference in the game. So, I think the key to this second half for our girls is to stay calm when they're pressing, make good passes, get it, get it across, set up your offense, and, or, or get out and run. When you get the ball, get out and run, get out in front of that press. And then on defense, play good man-to-man -man defense. That We know the, the Wildcat and the girls can. We've got some great athletes that are quick, quick hands, can knock that ball away. Be a little more aggressive on that de defensive end. Stay on those three-point shooters and don't let them have open shots. Let's see if it happens. So right there, we've got the start of the third quarter. We've got uh, Stewart out top, Taylor, Paddock, Brooke Shelley, and senior Kayla Niemeyer in for the Cash Lady Wildcats. Back up top to 13, Mackenzie Gill out to 23. She's looking deep face right. Back out to Witt, who's been the all-star. McClure with a three. It's short. Somebody get it. The Paddock does. No call. Quickly down the court, left side. Bennett will work back out to Taylor. Win on her. Tight man pressure here by the Dale. Lady Pirates looking for that double. Screen back in. <clears throat> Dale with the steal over Kaitlyn Niemeyer, number 23, Faith Wright. She'll get it to the corner. Skip back out to McClure. Let's see if she'll shoot the three. She shot about 20 tonight. It'll go back out to uh, 13 with a the miss there. Mackenzie Gill rebound to uh, Niemeyer to Taylor. And we're starting to over here. Stewart quickly down the baseline. Nice crossover. Baseline jumper is up. It's good. Way to go. Cedar Stewart. What a move. And finish there. 31-33. Dale quickly back down. Three-point shot by 21. Dana Lang is off. But uh, Faith Wright, right place at the right time for her. She gets her first bucket of the game. Back up to a four-point lead, 35-31. I think one of the girls kind of tripped. They didn't get down there to get that block out, and she had just a wide open uh, rebound and layup. Niemeyer gets it, doesn't look to drive, gets it back out to Taylor. She's got wit on her. Hand off to Bedick, she'll work right hand. Jump, she'll look back, nothing there. Back out to Stewart, we'll start over. Good defense by the Dale Lady Pirates there. Stewart with a cross back over underneath. Reverse lamp is up and coming! <laughs> Count it! Yes, ma'am! On senior line, Senator Stewart showing out, throws the hot lob, gets the call, and it falls. Hey, talk about Chris Paul moves right there. I mean, that that's that that crossover, and then just to put the ball up, float it up, and let it fall right through with the foul. She's not able to complete it, but God bless. That was an awesome shot and take. Quickly back down, 21, Dana Lang. Very aggressive physical player for Dale. Gets back out to McClure, McClure to Faith Wright, right to 13. Mackenzie Gill, she's working on Taylor. She says, no, thank you, I'll get rid of it. Good defense by the Cash Lady Wildcats on this trip back out. Skip pass back out to 13. Mackenzie Gill, she'll drive, give it out to McClure. Quint will drive, right hand, floaters up, and she'll get the foul on the call. Elaine Witt has been uber aggressive. She's been driving. She's been getting shots, and it's paying off for her and the Lady Pirates There's, tonight. She gets the ball on the move it towards the basket. She's going to the hole, and uh, she is great. does a great job of getting to the basket and finishing. And there at that time, she just kind of pulled up, shot a little jumper, and um, as I think Kaylin 
you know, got there to block her out, hit her on the way down and, and got the foul call. But, uh, man, you got to stay in front of her. She's got that quick first step, and, man, it's hard hard when a girl is, is that good at finishing at the rim and getting that, has that good first step. Dangerous pass into Brooke Shelley. She's able to wrestle the ball from McClure. McClure reaches. Again, Dale fans wanting a, a jump ball. Uh, most of the times that I've seen a jump ball, they're typically fouls before the right call there by the official. Second for McClure. Second team foul for Dale. Stewart will set back up up top on the foul call. Kick back out to Lamb left side, looking for Medic on the cut. Good action here. Good work by both teams. It's physical. Able look to get into Shelly. Gets it deep in the lane. Turn around is up. Good work there by Shelly. It's a good shot. It looks like we got it over the back on Shelly. It'll be the second team foul on Cash, and I believe the first. And it is the first on Brooke. Good work there by uh, Jason McClure, the senior. He's able to come back and first the rules of the fouls. And that, like you said, it was a good shot. I want to see that from Brooke. I want her to make that move, go up strong, and, and make those shots. Even though she missed that there, I still think that was the right, right move for her. That's great. Just hey, that's just that's just playing basketball right there. Yep. That's, that's a little uh, bat, uh, cut and go. Good work there by Dana Lang to pick up her tenth point of the game or ninth point of the game. Kick back out to Maddox. She'll shoot the three. In and out. Nice feed from Stewart. I thought that was going to go in. Lang with the rebound quickly down. She'll kick it out a little too hard there. The pass to number thirteen, or number three, number thirteen. Mackenzie Gill will go out of bounds to cash it. Now I'm going to ask you, Chris. Here they were actually. I mean, this is a lot of work for, for Kate Taylor here. They've left her no screens. They're, she's having to take probably what is the best defender on Dale's team. There's the trap. She recognizes it, but I wonder if that'll take its toll tonight. Yeah, and I mean that's just constant pressure on her to to make the right pass and ma make the right throws and, and not lose your dribble. And maybe that's what happened. You know, there at the end of the first half, she kind of had a few bad passes there, but you know, for the whole first half, other than that last minute and a half. She did a great job, and coming out in the second half, she's done a great job so far. Maybe that was the case. Uh, when you put that much pressure on her to, to make it happen on her own, uh, she's more than capable, but those legs might get tired on you by the end of the night. Couple threes, in and out, a little bad luck. Nice rebound by Bedick into Shelly. Mid-range is up. In and out, get a lid off that thing. Lauren Lamb battled with the ball. <clears throat> That's a tough one. So kudos to the uh, officials for not bailing out on the jump ball, but it looks like uh, Cedar Stewart's going to get the foul on that one. That'll be her first and third on Cashin here. Foul count 3-2 in favor of Cashin. Dale with the ball with a seven-point lead, their biggest lead of the game, 40-33, 3.47 left here in the third quarter. Whit up top, kicks it out, rolls to the right side, McClure. McClure will kick back out to 13, Mackenzie Gill. Skip pass. Jaden Lang, she'll have it. Medic working on her. I know you want that hook. I feel you. In and out. Battle with the ball. Ball's right in there. That's, that's like the sixth ball that's just fallen. It's gone back into Dale's hands. Yep, I know. I see it too, brother. Jaden mm. Lang with the jumper, and it goes in. 42-33, nine-point lead. Cashin needs a bucket here. Cross pass and land. Nice find by Caton. She should have swung it. I would have loved to see Brooke dive down on that one. Yep. Got the Taylor and we'll work and reset. Three minutes here in the third quarter. It's been all Dale here. Medic on the kick. She'll fake. Left hand. Good, good drive. It's up. In and up. Medic with the rebound. It's good. Goodness gracious. Thank you, Neely. Breaks that tonight. Seven point lead for Dale, 35-42. And we've, we've done a great job this second half of getting rebounds and offensive rebounds and getting those second chance, third chances. Man, there's just been a lid on the basket. Faith Wright will kick out, work out back to Witt. Witt, the workhorse for Dale. No walk call, and there's the walk call. Good, good. All. Hey, man, the, the officials have been fantastic. I don't want to jinx them. They've been yeah. pretty good tonight. Well, it, it makes a lot of difference when a when an official is up and down the court and in position to make calls, they and they can actually yeah, see what yeah. they need to see. Absolutely. And these guys are, are doing a great job of being where they need to be to make the good calls. On senior night, absolutely. Yes, sir. Cedar Stewart left side, back to Taylor, went on her. That's been the uh, M.O. all night. Lamb's got right side. She's looking for the back cut to Stewart. Shelley's hanging out at the three-point line. There you go. She'll get it. A little drive there on... 
Looks like Maya Miller. A lot of pressure, a lot of bumping. Yeah, when, when they're extended that far out, you want to see a bunch of cuts going towards the basket, or I, I'd like to see somebody going towards that basket and maybe hitting. You know, earlier in the ball game, we saw uh, Neely cutting to the basket and Cedar hit her on that layup. Yep. That's something that, you know, if we did more of when they're extending out, you know, that might, you know, and, we, and we're hitting it and making some of those, it, it'll, you know, alleviate some of that pressure way out, extended out like that. But right now we're just kind of passing around the perimeter and there's, we're not giving them any kind of reason to back off. Absolutely. But Cedar has, you know, has been kind of the catalyst in this second half and in that first half of, of making drives, making good passes, and she sure is the one that's kind of been sta uh, standing out on the offensive side of the ball. Now, don't get me wrong, Taylor's done a great job of, of handling the pressure that Dale's been throwing at him and making the right passes. This second half, you know, we were just talking about we're not really giving her any kind of screens, and as she comes up and gets close to half court, they're bringing girls from different places to try to trap her, and she's done a great job of finding that open person and getting to getting it to the right spots. Well, see, we just got to hit you. The shots have been good. They've been good shots. They just haven't fallen. So yep. uh, certainly that, that we'll look for that to change here. And on the defensive side, we haven't been playing bad defense. They're just good. I mean, they're making <laughs> they're making great cuts. They're yeah. making good passes. <laughs> and they're finding open girls. And uh, when that happens, I mean, you just got to give, you know, a lot of times it don't matter how good a defense you are. If you're playing a good good offensive team, they're going to score. Yeah, you just have to, you have to match their yeah. intensity on the other side. Well stated, Chris. Well stated. Taylor there. Man, hand on her on her hip the whole way. Poor Taylor, kick back out to Stewart to Bedick. Bedick with a left hand drive. She's up, in and out. She'll fight for the rebound. She's able to get it. Goodness gracious, a lot of lot of free hands flying around everywhere. It's getting physical. Nice look there. That's okay. Nice look by uh, by Bedick into Shelley. Good work there by Maya Miller, junior forward to kind of knock it out of bounds. It'll be cash and ball. 114 left here in the third quarter. Taylor with it, she'll work back up. Dayton Lang on her, applying all sorts of pressure all night. Kick back out to Bedick. See they're looking to get to Shelly. She's got, oh, she'll, she drew the double team there. Baseline drive, and we'll get a block. Good work. Dayton Lang is shocked that that was called. She probably should have fouled out by now. But that's what I was talking about earlier. She's being aggressive. They're not calling it. So why change what she's doing? Yep. And, uh, I mean, I guarantee if, you know, there's another foul there, she's got three or four on she three on her now. Yep. She's going to have to start backing off at some point because she doesn't want to foul out of the game. Absolutely. But I don't blame her. I'd be doing the same thing if I was her. And now that she's got that third foul, we'll see how aggressive she is. Skip pass baseline to Stewart from Taylor. She'll work back right side. Brooke Shelley with her shot. It's hmm. short. Lamb fighting for the ball. God bless her. Still loose ball. Brooke Shelley on the floor. Good effort there by the Lady Wildcats. And they do. They get it. Nice work. Somebody had to call it. I think they all looked at each other and said, yeah, who's going to call it? But they got the right call. Over and back on Dale. 40 seconds left here in the third quarter. Cashing down by seven. Taylor now working against Rutland. Rutland kicking left hand. Lamb with the three. It's up. It's long. A little too much energy on that one. Number 24, Libby Johnson's checked in. She'll work backside to Rutland, and we'll have another walk. Good call there by the official again. I'm not just saying that because it's going against Dale. But I kind of am. So 19.8 <laughs> left here in the third this quarter. This is Homer it is cash broadcast. Television. That's exactly right. And, and we, we, we let people know that. That's exactly right. You can always turn us down, but if you do so, you're just missing out on magic. Exactly. <laughs> Taylor with the ball, 17 seconds, third quarter here, cashing down by seven. There's no seven point shot out there, so we'll just like to see if we get a, the best three or two here for Kate and Taylor. Losing the ball, no call oh on the God. reach. Lost the ball. Rutland all the way up. A little dramatic call there by the baseline official. Count the bucket. That's Rutland's first back basket of the game, and she'll get an and one as Kaylin Niemeyer, a senior, picks up her third foul. With all the things that have happened in this game in terms of physicalness, I was a little shocked well, that that was called. The way the ball was taken from Taylor and then come down here and, and, to, and not called, and then to come down here and to get that call is, was kind of surprising to me. I mean, they kind of let her play there at half court, but at the basket they called it yeah. pretty quick. 
So with that, it's the end of the third quarter. Ella Sutkin had a chance on the rebound. It kind of got knocked out of her hands. Or actually, I think maybe someone headbutted it. But uh, that'll be the end of three where your Cash and Lady Wildcats trail the Dale Lady Pirates here on Cash and Wildcat TV, 35-44. It was a kind of a six to eleven rundown. It was a nice, nice uh, quarter win by the Dale Lady uh, Pirates. Yeah, and, and you want to see what I want to see out of the Wild, Lady Wildcats coming out in this fourth quarter after that big run by Dale. I want to see what how their demeanor is coming out and, yep. and see if they have the aggressiveness, the uh, the want to go to the basket and and, and try to you know get back in this ball game because they have the the ability to do it and because we've seen it and then just to stay that that aggressive or more you want to even more aggressive on the on the defensive side what i want to see they're letting them play dale's getting away with it i want to see our girls really get out there start you know slap at that ball get it and and make them have some turnovers amen so we have the start of the fourth quarter here on senior night monday night here in cashin Kane Taylor with the ball, senior guard, point guard, done it all for four years, done a fantastic job, daughter of Coach Andrea Taylor. She works the Bedick, Bedick to Niemeyer, another senior. Sunken in, she's checked in, looks like, for Brooke Shelley. Cedar Stewart in, another senior pass. Nice ball movement. Nobody's driving. We'll shoot the three, though. In and out. Goodness gracious, somebody unlocked the lid on that thing. Dale quickly back out. Pass to Witt, no walk call. She throws it up and it goes in. Like I said, that girl's good at finishing at the rim, and that time she was a little bit off balance going the other way and just had, had enough uh, strength to get the ball up and uh, over into the basket. Baseline, baseline with Stewart. We're going to get back into Nemo. Shoot She'll shoot the jumper. The long two is good. God bless you, Cedar Stewart. 12 points. Dale quickly back down, 37-46, cashing down by nine. Long two by, right, long, was that a three? That was a three by Rutland. She's got five on the night, 49-37. First made three for uh, Dale here in the second half. Extend to lead out to 12 now, 49-37. Goodness gracious. Let's get ready for playoff basketball. Yes, sir. Stewart with a tough pass to Bedick. Probably wants that one back. So with that, uh, Niemeyer and Sutkin will take a break. Lamb and Brooke Shelley will be back in. Down 12. This is uh, probably a pivotal point in the game here for Cashin. Yeah, let's get a stop here and then, you know, get that ball back down the, the court. I want to see them getting that, really make a point of getting the ball to Brooke Shelley and, and kind of playing our offense through her. Uh, we've seen, seemed to, you know, that very first play of the game seemed to be like where it was. And uh, we've had a lot of success in that first half with Brooke down there on the block. This half, I think we've only had her, you know, down there maybe one time. So there's our stop. Now let's get the ball down there and get – get you know back in this game and uh, get back to uh, what a five point game or a seven point game so Lamb with the ball she chooses not to drive but Bennett into Taylor oh. Taylor looks at the extra pass to Brooke Shelley probably should have passed it herself ball stolen we got a foul so here's the situation if you're watching film I, I know Lamb was probably wanting to get it back to Taylor but she had that left side I would have loved for her to take it in in that situation and drive in but yeah, we've got a foul now. First on Taylor, the senior. Five on Cash and three on Dale here in the second half. 5:47 left in the uh, fourth quarter. Dale quickly down. Went with the ball. Shooter Stewart on her pressure from Cash and broken. Faith Wright all the way up. Lefty goes up on Shelley and it's in. Faith Wright with four point. 51-37, 14 point lead for the uh, Dale Lady Pirates. Biggest lead of the game for them. And Taylor said, "Hey, look, we got to talk about this." Yeah, I think Coach Taylor just want to kind of get at, get get in her girls' ears and say, "Hey, calm down. It's still doable. We can do this. Let's. We're going to have the ball. Let's get a good place set. Get a score. Get it back down to to 12. If we, you know, like you said, well, there's no seven point play. <laughs> there's no 14 point play either. You're just going to have to chip away, chip away. And uh, with the five five minutes 32 seconds left. You're going to have to really focus on that offensive side of the ball and make sure you're getting, you know, quick, good shots that you can get up and in. All right, so out for cash, and we've got Stewart, Taylor, Bedick, Lamb, and Shelley. We've got Witt. We've got Dana Lang. 
Number three, Amelia Eidelman. Number 23, Faith Wright. And number four, senior Jason McClure out for the Dale Lady Pirates. Taylor with the ball. Witt on her. We've seen this all night. Gets it across the timeline. Good job by Witt. Excellent defender. Taylor will work the right side. Dangerous pass to Stewart. Dana Lang with another bucket, her 13th of the game with the steal and coast to coast drive. You know, we talked about Taylor's legs and her, you know, being tired, but uh, you got to give it to Lane Witt. She's been the one out there giving the pressure, and uh, she's got to be getting worn out too, but she sure has kept up the energy. Taylor all the way down, throws up the baseline drive, no foul call. Lane with the rebound, block on that play. Jason McClure all the way down. Let's look to see if she's going to shoot the three. Lamb says, ah, ah. Witt with the deep three. It's up. In and out. Bedick with the rebound. Nice work by Bedick. She gets it out way ahead to Taylor. Taylor's able to track it down. Back out to Shelly. Shelly will eye the lane. She'll go all the way up and in. Let's see if it'll fall. And we got a block call. Nice work by Brooke Shelly. Taking the ball. Left hand in the lane. Looks like the foul will be on Amelia Edelman. Fourth foul for Dale. It's her second. We'll be sending Brooks out to the line. You know, for Brooke, you know, being a post player, you see, you know, when I played post, you didn't want to see me put the ball on the floor. <laughs> but when Brooke does it, she, she has great uh, dribbling skills. And when she gets the ball out there and nobody's in front of her, that's what you want to see her do. She misses the free throw that she never does. But <laughs> it's been that kind of night for the yes. Lady Wildcats. Second one is up and good for Brooke Shelley. She's got seven on the night. 38-53, 15-point lead for Dale. 420. Kate and Taylor has checked out. Ellen Sutkin back in. See if uh, Coach Taylor will give uh, Kate a blow here and get her back in here within a couple thir about 30 seconds. Laying with the uh, ball fake and drive. Good defense by Bedick. Lamb on Wit now. On the curl, long two by number 23, Faith Wright. She's got six. Bedick will go work left side. 55-38, 17-point lead. 356. If you're cashing, you got to figure something out. Good call there. Good work. Advantage gain. Advantage gain. Foul will be on number 23, her third, Faith Wright. That will be the fifth team foul on Dale. Five to five here in the second half. Stewart with the ball. She'll work right side. A little double high post here. She'll work down. She'll clear out. Mm. <clears throat> Turnover. Little extra steps there. Maybe expecting a, a screen or some sort of roll. So uh, with the turnover, Dale will take over. Witt with the ball. She'll get it across the timeline. McClure chasing her. Looking for that back cut on Sutkin. Nice work there by the freshman catching up to Amelia Eidelman, recognizing that back cut on the baseline. Ball goes out of bounds back to Dale. Nice giving, nice pass in from uh, Lang into to right. Deep three by Eidelman, her first three. She's got five on, on the game. 58-38. It's a 20-point game now. Yeah, and the thing is, you know, on the Dell side of things, there's girls that didn't even score in the first half that have now have six and, and eight points, I think. And, uh, man, they, they just got a lot of girls that can put shots up and they, they, they uh, you know, go towards the basket, they get the ball to them. That's something that uh, the Wildcats are going to have to watch film on because they're going to see teams like this in the playoffs. If they want to be able to advance and get to, you know, get to the, their, what their goal is, they're going to have to be able to stop that stuff and not let that happen. Brooke Shelley with a nice move underneath. She gets the basket. Cedar Stewart on the steal back low. Kane Taylor with the three who's checked back in. She misses. Ball goes out of bounds. Shelly working hard to get, trying to get that offensive rebound. It's an 18-point game. Dale up 58-40 here on Cash and Wildcat TV. 240 left here in the fourth quarter. Dale will probably most likely look to work around and find the best shot. Pass inside to Amelia Eidelman. And she's able to draw the foul on the freshman, Ella Sudkin. That's number one for Sunkin, 16 foul for Cash, and first shot is up, and it rolls off. Izzy Reeves, who's been pretty quiet, we haven't seen a whole lot of Izzy tonight, will be checking in for Brooke. Brooke will get a rest here, most likely come back here in about 30 or 40 seconds. 
of game time. We haven't seen a whole lot of double posts. I guess all the guard play that we see from Dale. Oh, there's a ton of lane violations there. <laughs> they didn't call any of them. I guess because everybody did it, they just well, let then it then go. Well, it still needs to be a, then it's a, still <laughs> a lane violation. Nonetheless, uh, Bedix got it. She's looking at Izzy Reeves. Good defense there by uh, Maya Miller on her. Go in. Taylor with the three. It's round and round. Doesn't fall in. McClure with the rebound. Senior guard, 59-40. Dale up by 19. Maya Miller with the ball. All the way up, she misses. And there's a foul there. That'll send Izzy Reeves to the line. So and Kate Taylor will have a seat, as well as uh, Cedar Stewart, Niemeyer, and Lamb back in. Actually, no foul. I guess that is the sixth foul. Sixth foul, yeah. I thought that might have been, uh, I was getting ahead of myself. Thirteen foul, or third foul by Amelia Eidelman. Six on both teams. Sunken on the right wing. She'll kick out to Lamb. Lamb will work left side. Back out to Vedic. Vedic with a three. Bang! Needed that one. Second made three for Neely Vedic. She's got, uh, it's like 12 on the night. McClure with the ball. 43-59, 16-point lead for Dale. Got a lot of subs in for Dale. Number 12. We'll have to look her up. Justice Shiri. Shiri, I think she's got a brother on the... Uh, on the boys team, she hits her first three. Justice is sophomore, 5'7 sophomore. Ella second with the ball, no foul called. No foul called there, and she's gonna call a walk. So the defender knocks over the ball carrier, the girl hitting the ball, and a walk is called. So that's a tough call. So we've got mass substitutions here, 121 left here. It's like Coach Taylor's waving the white flag. Down 19, 62-43. We've got Lindsey Miller, freshman in. Bella Woody, sophomore in to join Izzy Reeves, Lauren Lamb, and Ella Sunkin. Basically the future of the basketball team right here, minus Brooke yep. Shelley. Drive by number 12, Shirey. She's able to uh, draw the foul on uh, Lindsey Miller. And she'll be going to the line. You know, I, I'm just, you know, I got to believe in this situation. You know, combination of a few things probably, right? Legs, fifth game in seven days. Don't ever want to make excuses, right? But uh, maybe the pressures of senior night. And to your point, Dale's pretty darn good. Yeah. yeah. Number five in the, in the state, class 2A. They've had big wins over a lot of ranked opponents, including number one, Vanoss, as well as number three, Lada, just, just as early as these last couple of weeks. Izzy Reeves with the rebound. One minute left here. Lamb with the ball. She'll work left side. Duncan with the ball, back to Lindsey Miller. Lamb's got it, she'll drive left baseline. Good defense. Nice work into Izzy Reeves. Trying to work down the right side, trips over a couple of pom-poms. Come on girls, get that stuff out of the way. Got a basketball game. We love our cheerleaders though, our people throwers. We Heck love them, yeah. we love them. Well, our girls got their stuff out of the way. They do have their stuff out of the way. <laughs> they don't have much room on that baseline down no, there. They don't. 39 seconds left. Dale baseline drive by number two. In and out. 24, Libby Johnson with the ball. She'll work back to number 14. Mackenzie Herman. Got a little keep away here in the last few minutes. Dale is looking to score. These girls have gotten in. They want to go score. Shot in and out by number 15. Tough pass. Flip back out to 14. No walk call. Drive by number two, it's in. Addie Bell, sophomore, and that's it. So with that horn, it's your Dale Lady Pirates victorious here on senior night over the Cash and Lady Wildcats. 64-43, a 21 point win. Certainly not exactly what the seniors or Coach Taylor wanted tonight, but in terms of getting ready for the playoffs, Right, they're one step closer, had an opportunity to kind of find where their opportunities are at against a really good Dale team. Yep, and the thing is that first half, I mean, we had the lead from the majority of the first half. They kind of got away from us there in the, uh, right at the end and got a, got a four-point lead. And then that going into that third quarter, we just could not get a bucket to fall, and everything was falling for uh, Dale, the Dale Pirates. And like you said a while ago, I mean, we're not going to make excuses, but those girls, we'll give it up to the Dale Pirate, Lady Pirates. They played a great game tonight, and, and it just showed whenever they were making buckets and we weren't, that's when it got out of hand, and we just couldn't make up the difference. Make it up. 
So with that, uh, my name's Neiman Ababi, my partner Chris Gibson here. We're going to sign off here on the girls' game, and we'll get you started on the stream for the uh, boys in the second of the doubleheader where you have number two, Cash and Wildcats, versus the number three, two-way Dale Pirates here in a battle of the top three in Class 2A. Thanks so much for joining us.